Welcome to another dazzling edition of Beeb Watch. This is the show where I give the state broadcaster the talk TV treatment. Put it under the microscope to find out exactly what is going on behind closed doors at the channel that we pay for. And remember, I'm watching the BBC, so you don't have to. Spare a thought, if you will, for five of the BBC's most senior news broadcasters. They all worked for the BBC News Channel. That has been merged uh, between its international and UK wings in a move to save money, get rid of various members of staff. And what has happened is that has left five major female newsreaders out in the cold. I'm talking about Martin Croxell, Karen Giannoni, Gita Gurumurti, Kasia Madeira, and Anita McVeigh. Between them, they've got a hundred years of experience of broadcasting, and yet they've been cast aside, uh, left to stay at home. I mean, these women, very skillful, experienced broadcasters, are literally not working from home. They're just being cast aside where we pay for them. They are still being paid for by license fee money and uh, are doing nothing. Among the staff, there is absolute seething fury, not least because every single one of these people, as you may have noticed, are women. So that's not a good look. And worse, they're all over 45. So we come back to our favorite hobby horse subject of BBC ageism. This strikes me and many others, many people at the BBC, as a case of sexism and ageism. Clearly the merging of the UK news channel and the international BBC news channel uh, was a move to save money to get rid of staff. But now they don't seem to know what to do uh, because they haven't actually got rid of anyone. They're still paying them. They've just told them to sit at home doing nothing. And these five women have taken to sort of going out for lunches and saying, here we are, you know. So I guess for some people, they might think that's quite a nice way of life. But no, no, these are professional women. They're great at their jobs. And why can't the BBC find them somewhere to go? Martin Croxall, of course, is no stranger to trouble at the BBC. She infamously told the viewers just how gleeful she was when Boris Johnson pulled out of the Tory leadership race. Well, this is all very exciting, isn't it? Hello and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. Am I allowed to be this gleeful? Well, I am. Martine clearly doesn't like Tories and certainly doesn't like Boris Johnson. For this kind of glimpse into her political worldview, she was suspended. I mean, it was an egregious example of a left-wing BBC journalist telling everyone that she's left-wing. So she was uh, put out of work. She went to not work from home again. And now she's doing it once more, out of the frying pan and into the fire. But I do feel sorry for these women. And I think the BBC should take a good hard look in the mirror at the way it treats women and the way it treats particularly women over the age of 45, ageist and sexist. What are you going to do about it? So what's the BBC's favourite event in the whole world ever? It is, of course, Glastonbury, where middle class people go and stand in a field and pretend to be counterculture rebels, which they're not. Perfect BBC fair. So they go down there, the state broadcaster, every year, and they cover this pop concert like it's the second coming or something. And this year, You'll never guess how many staff they're sending down to cover Glastonbury, a pop concert that usually gets about two or three hundred thousand viewers at best. They're sending a thousand staff. A thousand BBC workers are off to Glasto to organise the coverage of that non-event uh, for the viewers. Unbelievable. Imagine the money. One thousand staff. It is unbelievable. It's a complete catastrophe. That is a waste of licence fee payers' money on an epic scale. Absolutely disgraceful. Every year they say, oh, well, you know, this is very entertaining and people want to watch it. I'm not saying they shouldn't cover Glastonbury, but they cover it obsessively with so many staff that if the BBC didn't go down there, the crowd would be half as small. Of course, the Beeb uh, always sends hundreds of people to every event. Look at the Olympics. I mean, 
back in 2012, 765 covered the event in London. I suppose that's in London, so what the hell. But in Rio, four years later, 2016, 455 staff traveled to the other side of the world. Don't forget, you know, in Glastonbury, the Olympics, don't forget the World Cup. They always send hundreds to the World Cup. Qatar, which they so disapproved of because of its human rights records, didn't stop them sending hundreds and hundreds of staff there. Uh, don't forget they're all staying in expensive hotels, dining out on expenses, uh, pulling in their salaries. You and me, we're paying for that. We're paying for it. You do not need 765 people to cover a single event. You do not need 1,000 people to cover Glastonbury. This is excessive. It is so over the top. It's obscene, grotesque, a massive, massive waste of license fee payers' money, particularly when you realise that last year at Glastonbury, uh, Paul McCartney did do quite well. He got the two million uh, viewers plus. But on Sunday night, they got about 500,000. And quite regularly, there's 50,000 people watching. 1,000 staff to cover an event that is only getting hundreds of thousands of viewers. That's just wrong. If you want to go down there in person this year to watch uh, stars like uh, the Arctic Monkeys, Guns N' Roses, Elton John, then it's uh, 340 quid for a ticket to actually be there. But that is nothing compared to the money the BBC is spending to pipe this event into your living rooms. 340 quid to go there, Ugh, I don't know. Do you want to spend that amount of money queuing up for Portaloos and uh, getting on with rain? I don't know. But uh, the BBC, the amount they spend on these events, uh, it's, a, it's a scandal. It really is a scandal. They take our money and they absolutely waste it. So I reported on Beatwatch just three weeks ago that Jack Nichols, the voice of Formula One on uh, both the BBC and a channel called Formula E had been sacked by Formula E uh, for inappropriate behaviour around women. He accepted the reason the decision was taken and he apologised. Now, as I say, I predicted then that it wouldn't be long before the axe fell at the state broadcaster as well. And guess what? It has. Poor old Jack is history. He's gone. The voice of Formula One is no more at the BBC. I'm afraid it's time to wave the checkered flag for Jack. That's it for another edition of Beeb Watch. If you agree with anything I said, or if you disagree, please let me know what you think in the comments box below. And don't forget, uh, it's completely free, unlike the BBC, so you can subscribe. Meanwhile, I'm off to see if there's any jobs going at the news channel.